Hey, what's going on, y'all? So look, I was going through my old pictures from when I was in college, my last year of college, when I found Christ. And I had these pictures on my wall with my handwriting on it that said, you can't impact the world while trying to be like the world. And the reason that I wrote this down was because I was going through a phase where I felt and knew the Lord was calling me to be an evangelist, to be a preacher. But I was so shy, I was so nervous, I was so timid of literally everything. Anytime I walked in a room, anytime I was around other people, I was just so socially anxious. And I would think that everyone was staring at me and everyone was looking at something in me that I didn't see in myself and it was embarrassing. And I always felt like I needed to hide something. But then I meditated on the scripture where it says in James 4.4, 4, James wrote, you adulterers and you adulteresses, if you have friendship with the world, then you are an enemy to God. And obviously that didn't mean if you liked the trees and the nature and all the things that God created, it meant if you were a companion of the worldly systems, the worldly agendas, and all of the crookedness that goes on in this world, then you are an enemy to God. Because the world's standards, the world's expectations, the world's view of life is contrary to the biblical way of life so that's something that i used to meditate on a lot and also in galatians chapter 1 verse 10 paul wrote if you seek the approval of men then you cannot be a servant of god because you're it goes back to having two masters you're going to love one and you're going to hate the other and i know in that specific scripture the word was speaking of god and money but what does satan come to tempt us with money he comes to tempt us with fame, popularity, followers, likes, all of these things. And God is saying, you have to be wholeheartedly serving him or wholeheartedly serving Satan. Revelation 3.16, Jesus wrote, I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So what I'm getting from all of this and what I hope you're getting from all of this is you have to be all in for Christ all the time. You can't say to yourself, oh, I'm going through a season where I'm less on fire. I'm going through a season where I have to compromise the word. No, that's Satan speaking to you. The Lord says to be ready to preach the word in every season, in and out of season. Always be ready to preach the word. Always be ready to contend for the faith. Always be ready to give a reason for why you believe in him and why he saved your life with gentleness and meekness and with respect and with love. So... This life is not our own. We already know that our bodies were bought with a price. So we can't say, oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, my reputation. No, your reputation needs to be Christ because Christ didn't worry about his reputation. Christ didn't worry about all the fame and all the... There's actually a scripture in the Bible where many came to Jesus to get healed. Many came with all of their infirmities, all of their sicknesses, and they were begging Jesus to heal them. But instead of Jesus healing them, he went to the mountains to pray instead because he had to connect to his father. And I believe that was an example for us. When we go through situations in life where we're getting more attention than usual, when we're getting more applause, more love, more um, people just loving us, I feel like, it was a fly in my face, I feel like we need to go to the secret place so that we can continue and remain to be humble. Because the Bible says, humble yourselves then God will exalt you. Then God will lift you up. And it also goes on to say, I believe, I forgot where it is, but I believe it's in the Gospels. The Bible says, whoever exalts themselves, whoever speaks highly of themselves, whoever puts themselves on a pedestal, they will be abased. But those who humble themselves in the sight of the Lord, they will be exalted by God. So we have to realize that this is about humility. It's about the fruit of the spirit because Jesus said you're going to know his disciples by their love and by their fruit. The nine fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, faithfulness, self-control, kindness, goodness. Um, I, I, what, what are the other ones? Meekness. I forgot the other ones. I hope I put them on the screen. But the fruit is what you're going to know them by. You're not really going to know a disciple by the gifts that they have. Gifts are amazing. I ask for the nine gifts of the spirit every single night. The words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, faith, prophecy, discerning of the spirits, healing, miracles. 
diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. I ask for the nine gifts of the Spirit every night, and I ask for the nine fruit of the Spirit every night. But we're only going to be known by the fruit. Because in Matthew 7, Jesus said, there's going to be many people who call me Lord, Lord, and they won't inherit the kingdom of God. I rebuke that fly in the name of Jesus Christ. That thing is demonic. But um, Jesus said in Matthew 7, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, and they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. These people are going to be those who prophesied in his name, those who casted out devils in his name, those who've done many wondrous works and deeds in his name. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. So we know that new in the original language, it translates to intimacy. It translates to being in a secret place with God. Because if we're not in a secret place with God, if we're not being refilled by his power, by his love, and by, by his word, then how are we going to pour out to anyone else? Many people like myself, I've gotten distracted in the past of always preaching, always uh, trying to prophesy, always doing all of these things, and then forgetting to refill in the prayer closet, forgetting to refill in my study time. And at that, in that, in that moment, I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice because you're taking yourself out of the will of God and you're putting yourself in a position of religion because you will say, oh, doing these good things is good, doing this, da, 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 da. but your righteous deeds are as filthy rags to God. And our righteousness alone comes by faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't come by how well we can preach. It doesn't come by how well we can go out to the world and proclaim the gospel. Those things are amazing. But if we do those things with a heart of stone, if we do those things with a mind that's been flooded with evil thoughts if we do those things with a corrupt spirit i believe that that's flat out disrespect to god and many people they do do these things they don't get checked they don't get rebuked and the reason that they don't get rebuked is because they don't have people in their circles that want to say yo this is what the word of god says you need to study more you need to fast more you need to pray more they have a bunch of people around them that encourage them to do things that they want to do and not what God wants them to do. But the Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but that end, it leads to death. And there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, but they have not been cleansed from their filthiness. That's what the Bible says. So if you're watching this video, I encourage you to seek the Lord with all of your heart. Seek the Lord with all of your strength. And if you seek him, you're going to find him. If you knock, he will open that door. If you ask, you will receive in faith. But I want you to know right now that although the times are getting worse, I don't really speak about the COVID-19 thing, but I'm going to do it today. I don't really, I'm not going to say I don't care about it, but there's an agenda obviously with it. And the devil, he's using this to cause division in the church. He's using this to promote fear and to prompt fear into people in the world. And He's running away with this thing. And some saints are getting carried away with it. Some saints are dying from the virus. There's a lot of stuff going on. We're obviously in the end times. I just saw that in Canada, they're not allowing people to travel without a vaccine passport. In America and in, in uh, New York, they're not allowing people to go into bars without a vaccine passport. Some people are denying religious exemptions and things like that. But I want you to know, as the world gets more bold with their agenda, the preachers, the Christians, they need to get more bold with proclaiming the word that will set everyone free. And this doesn't always have to be somebody preaching on a microphone. It doesn't always have to be somebody going out and publicly making a statement for themselves. Sometimes it could just be you in your living room speaking to your family, dividing the word of truth, the scriptures, the Bible. Sometimes it could be you in a mall just talking to somebody, hey, Jesus loves you, he hates your sin. Sometimes it's just you handing out a track. It's not always where the camera is on you and the light is on you. Sometimes it's as simple as a one-on-one -on -one conversation in the middle of an airport. Jesus Christ, he is raising up warriors for this time. He's raising up soldiers for this time, people who don't care. And back to the beginning of the video, when God called me to preach, he didn't call me to just hop right on the microphone. First, he called me to identify my own flaws. And he, he called me to bring attention to the secret faults that were hidden inside of me as King David wrote. And I had to repent. I had to ask God to cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness because the Bible says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and righteous to forgive you of your sins. Not only that, but to cleanse you of your righteousness. I had to humble myself. I had to seek the Lord so that he could heal me, so that he could forgive me of my wicked ways. I had to do a 
deep, a deep examination of my own spirit and test my own spirit, test and examine my own ways as I got in his presence. And he brought everything to light. He exposed all of the dark things that were hidden inside of me and he brought it to light so that I could get cleansed. You can't go around covering your sins. If you cover your sins, you won't prosper. But if you voice and confess your sins, he will be merciful to you. And um, another thing too, yeah, like when he called me to preach in college, I didn't just hop right on the streets. I did the first time. I went out and I wasn't preaching, but I was with another more mature believer than myself. And I was observing, um, you know, spiritually discerning the environment, the spiritual climate, learning what not to do, what to do when preaching, learning what not to say and what to say, learning when to leave people alone, you know, when to wipe the dust off your feet and when to keep pursuing. I was learning these things. And I actually have this picture of me studying in my college dorm. And in this time, I wasn't doing any schoolwork. I had about six courses, which is a lot. That's like 18 credits. Usually college students to be full time, you take 12 to 15 credits, but I would have 18 credits because I was trying to graduate on time. And although I had all those classes, I wasn't studying for any of them. I was studying the Bible every single night, journaling, looking up, uh, pastors and preachers on YouTube, just absorbing the word of God, getting full of it. And I remember going to my professor saying, hey, I didn't do this assignment because last night I was fasting and I was so miserable and I had to study the Bible because da, da, da. just explaining myself. And I was about three months into the faith. I didn't really know much. I was telling them all the stuff that I was going through spiritually. And they were like, okay, we understand. You know, you have no excuse but we understand and next time, you know, do this, da, 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 da. And I remember I still, I would do no work in college and I would just study the Bible all night. Like I would literally fall asleep reading the Bible and I would wake up the next morning, 10 minutes before class with the Bible over my face and I would keep reading it and I would walk into class 30 seconds before it would start and I would have absolutely no work done. But somehow that semester, that particular semester, I remember it like it was yesterday. I finished with over a 3.0 GPA and this was a it was a miracle of God the Lord saw that I was hungry the, the Bible says if you uh, the Bible says two things it says first if you hunger and thirst for his righteousness you will be filled and you're gonna be blessed I was blessed and I was filled with his spirit Matthew 6 33 it says Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. So I was seeking his kingdom first. I was seeking his righteousness first. I was desiring and I was hunger and thirsty for him, for his righteousness. And I was filled. I was blessed. I didn't do an ounce of homework. I didn't do an ounce of anything, but I was getting A's on exams. That's the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit. He was living inside of me. He knows all things. I was getting A's on exams. I was completing 100 point assignments, 100 point projects with the littlest amount of effort. I was studying the word so much, man. And this is what he called us to do. And Timothy says to study to show yourself approved. Uh, As we go out to this world, we have to know why we believe in what we believe in. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceives you. The Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to be able to call fire down from heaven. He's going to be able to do all of these crazy miracles and signs and wonders you have to have the word of god written on your heart so you're not deceived by anything and <clears throat> first john the the epistle the epistle of john it says test every single spirit to see whether they are of christ because many people are going to come in the name of christ many people are going to come as false prophets as false teachers jude jude um jesus's half brother his entire epistle was written to contend for the faith, to expose and to bring warning about false teachers entering into the church. They would creep into the church unaware. We have to have the Bible on our minds and on our hearts in order for us to spot out the deception. Because if we're not walking in the truth, if we're not walking in this spirit, we will be deceived. That's why having a Bible on you is so right here. He left it in my car after um, evangelism in DC, but you need to have this thing on you at all times. You need to have it in your mind, on your heart, on your spirit, on your soul, in your car, 
um, on your phone. You need to have it everywhere because this is what's going to keep you out of deception. This is what's going to keep you hungry. This is what's going to keep you going hard for the Lord no matter what, whether you're tired, whether you're thirsty, whether you're hungry, whether whatever. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. And this all proceeded out of God's mouth. This is scripture and scripture cannot be broken. Scripture is going to be health to your bones. Scripture is going to divide between your soul and your spirit, between the joints and the marrow. It's going to discern the deepest intentions of your hearts and of your mind. The sword of the spirit is going to cut at every demonic entity, every demonic principality. It's going to bring strongholds down. This is where you're going to be able to fight. You're not going to be able to fight from a carnal worldview because your weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of demonic strongholds. We walk in the flesh, but we don't war in the flesh. This is what we walk with. This is our sword. If we don't have a sword, then we don't have a weapon to fight with in the spiritual realm. There was a time where a man approached me in a physical nature and I started to quote spiritual words. I started shooting spiritual bullets at him and he fell back in the physical of something as if as if something attacked him. And it was the word of God attacking that demon inside of him. So listen, this is what we need. That's what's going to keep us out of deception. And I wanted to make this video nice and short, but I love you. If you support the ministry, if you support the channel, thank you so much. The Lord has taken us to deeper places. He's taken us to higher places. He's taken us further than we've ever been before. He's putting a fire inside of our bones and inside of our mouths like Jeremiah. And everyone that we preach to is going to be like wood. They're going to get consumed by that fire of God because he is a consuming fire. And he's going to burn everything that does not represent him to pieces in my life. And I pray that he does it in your life as well and this is a time that we can't be timid we can't be distracted we can't be scared of anything because second timothy verses seven chapter one says god did not give us a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind and the perfect love of god will drive out cast out every spirit of fear so i want you to know that you need to be bold as god called joshua to be bold he said do not be dismayed do not be discouraged but be of good courage be of be of good strength be of good courage have strength because i'm with you wherever you go that's what he told him he said don't be dismayed don't be discouraged be strong be of good courage because i'm with you wherever you go and he told us believers that no weapon formed against us shall prosper every tongue that rises against us in judgment we won't condemn it we have to start walking in that power and authority luke chapter 10 19 jesus said behold i have given you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions not regular physical serpents and scorpions but demons that's symbolic to demons although we can stomp on them physically but that was really symbolic to demons and he goes on to say that i've given you power and authority over all of the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you greater is he who is inside you than he who was in the world the same spirit that raised christ from the dead is now dwelling inside of you and whoever defiles the temple of God him shall God destroy so um, I'm saying all this to say the time is now the time is now the time is now you know I'm ready I pray to God that you're ready prayer war everyone everyone get ready because there's a shaking happening in the atmosphere and if we're not standing on a word of God if this isn't our foundation for the way that we live life and we're gonna fall and we're going to turn back. There's going to be many people in the last days, many Christians in the last days that depart from the faith. They're going to give in to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're going to depart from the faith because they're going to love the world more than they love God. They're going to be lovers of pleasures more than they're lovers of God. They're, it's go oh, wow, crazy, man. But um, God bless you. Holy Spirit, anything else you want to say to your people? Anything else you want to say to me? I, I, I believe the Holy Ghost is saying that in the day of wrath, possessions and wealth, it won't profit you. And he's going on to say, what will it profit a man to gain the world and lose his own soul? Live for righteousness, die to sin. Sin shall not have power over you because the power over you is of Jesus Christ. And in him, wherever his spirit is, there is liberty. What else? God is saying that just as he told Ezekiel and just as he told Isaiah, when people make faces, weird faces at you, and when they're rebellious and they refuse to hear your word, God is saying, 
to preach it reg regardless of if they hear it or not. And he's saying you could do it in two ways. In the book of Jude, he's saying that you can do it with compassion, saving them with compassion and love because God's kindness it will lead them to repentance. Or you can do it by literally snatching them out of the fire, snatching them from the enemy with fear and with trembling because the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is going to be the beginning of wisdom. And, and the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil is the hatred of arrogance is the hate hatred of pride and he's going on to say right now to you to abhor everything that is evil meaning to hate to deem as detestable as an abomination everything that's evil and to cleave on to what is good and he's saying what's good is the father and he's saying what's good is the hem of his garment and he wants you to hold on to what with all of your might with all of your strength because he's going to take you through deep waters and you won't be drowned you won't be harmed he's going to take you through the fire you won't be burned you're going to be strengthened and he and he said he's going to be in the fire with you just as he was with Shirak, Meshach, and Abednego. He's going to be the fourth man in the fire, and there's not going to be a hair on your head that's going to perish as you go through this new season of fire, as you go through this new season of heat, intense heat. It's going to burn everything off of you that was not of him. What else are you saying? I, I, I think that was for me, God. What else are you saying? God is saying, don't be afraid when people come to you to throw you in jail or to persecute you or to do anything like that. He says, if you continue and if you endure until the end, you're going to be saved and you're going to have the crown of life on your head from overcoming the temptations of Satan. It's going to come in a form of sexual immorality. It's going to come in a form of fear. But God is saying, if you hold on to him and if you endure until the end, you will be saved and he, he will give you the crown of life because he loves you and he knows that you love him. What else? What else, God? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you don't repent, you will all likewise perish. And I think that's all he's saying. So God bless you. Thank you.